The previous video in this particular playlist looked at this structure here, the selection structure, and this is the if selection structure. Now, if the account is overdrawn, charges are applied to the account. So look at this dot, and this is going to represent one of the flows through the program if the customer is not overdrawn at the end of the day. However, they could be overdrawn, in which case this is the direction of flow. We apply the charges, and then the flow continues with what would be the rest of the computer program. Now, if you didn't follow that, make sure you look at the previous video in this particular playlist. Let's take the specification we've already been looking at. If the account is overdrawn, charges are applied to the account. But let's change the spec slightly. Let's say at the end of the day, if the customer has got money in the account, then they're given a bonus. Yeah, not much money, but some bonus is given to them so long as their account isn't overdrawn. So we can write this as follows. If the account is overdrawn, charges are applied to the account, else credit a bonus to the account. Let's use a flowchart to explain what's going on here. We ask, are you overdrawn? If the answer is true, then we apply charges to the account, and then we carry on with what would be the rest of the program. However, what would happen if being overdrawn was false? Well, we take this route, and we come down here, and we credit the bonus to the account, and then we carry on with the rest of the program. Let's use a red dot to show both flows through this particular flowchart. Well, here we can see the dot, and we're going to have a look at the flow when we're overdrawn. And you can see you come in this direction, you apply the charges, and then you carry on with what would be the rest of the program, as you can see there. Now, of course, we could have money in the bank at the end of the day, so we'll go in this direction now, the false direction, and we'll credit the bonus to the current account balance, and then we will carry on with the rest of the computer program. So for the if-else construct, a choice is made. The choice is between two paths, the truth path where we apply the charges, and of course the false path when we're not overdrawn and we credit the bonus to the current account. If true, execute this, apply the charges. Else, execute this. That's the choice we have with this construct. We execute one or the other. Now, if you go back to the previous selection construct, what you'll be aware of is that you applied the charges or you didn't apply the charges. Here, if you don't apply the charges, then you're applying the bonus. So there is a difference between the two constructs. So be quite careful that you note that difference. This represents the flowchart for the if-else construct in Python. This bit of the Nasi Snyderman chart is how we represent the if-else construct of Python. The overall Nasi Snyderman chart shows us the solution to the specification we've been considering in this video. Let's look at each line at a time. Here you can see that we are asking our program when we implement it to set the bank charge. Then we're asking to set the bank bonus. And then we're setting an account balance. Now, when we get onto the selection bit, which is this, we will ask this question first. Is the account overdrawn? And we're going to say, for argument's sake, yes, it is. So it'll be true. Consequently, we apply the charge. Then we display the account balance after the charge has been applied. Of course, another route through this particular solution here and through the program when we implement the program from this Nasi Snyderman chart is we set the bank charge, we set the bonus, we set the account balance, and now let's say that we are not overdrawn, in which case we will say that it is false, and we will credit the bonus to the account, and then we will display the account balance. So we've just seen there are two possible routes through the Nasi Snyderman chart. And the other thing to note is that the Nasi Snyderman chart is the solution. Those steps, as represented by the Nasi Snyderman chart, are what we convert into code. We have to represent this solution in Python code. 
Let's revisit the NS chart with some figures. The first step, set bank charge to £10. Next step, set bank bonus to a pound. Next step, set account balance to £50. Those three steps formed a sequence. Now we go into the selection construct and we ask the question, overdrawn? Well, clearly not because the account balance is £50. So this is false. So we credit the bonus to the account. Now this will mean adding the bank bonus, which we've just seen is £1, to the account balance, which is 50 giving £51. And then we display the account balance, and that should display 51 representing the £51 that's been calculated when we've worked our way through this particular solution here. And when we convert this NS chart into code and we run it with these same figures we want the program to produce 51 pound and that if you like would be our test plan or one of the test plans because we've now got to look at this again with different figures so we see it going through the true route of the if else selection construct let's have a look at the execution through this here well the first step is set the bank charge to 10 pound the next step is set the bank bonus to a pound and the next step well this is the one we've changed this has been changed to minus 20. consequently when we ask this question here overdrawn well it's true it is overdrawn because it's minus 20 pound therefore this particular step will be executed to apply the charge and of course what will happen here is the current minus 20 will have the charge taken away from it which is £10, so the result will be minus 30. So when we come here now to execute this line, which is the line immediately after the selection construct, it will display minus 30. So when we convert this to Python, for the figures of £10 for the bank charge, £1 for the bank bonus, balance of minus 20, we expect the program to display minus 30. This is the Python program that I've converted from the NS chart that we saw a few moments ago. And we can see the general structure of the program is as follows. Here is the sequence, the three steps that were shown in the NS chart. This area of the code is the if-else selection construct. And this is the line of code that comes immediately after the selection construct. This here is the output when this particular program executes. So let's just have a look at some of the features of this before we show its execution. Here we can see we have the keyword if or a reserve word. That's a word that if you belongs to Python. This is a word we cannot use for a variable name, for example. And here you can see there's a colon. Immediately following that colon, you can see we have some white space. Now, this particular line here is indented immediately after the if. Now, this is the line that's executed if this test here is true. Let's now have a look at this keyword here, else. You can see that also is immediately followed by this colon, which in turn is followed by this white space. Now, this particular line of code is indented after the else and this line is executed when this test here is false and this line comes immediately after the selection construct as we've already discussed so let's now look at the execution of this program from the figures that we've inputted on each of the three lines of the sequence and as an aside of course this information here I've put into the code but you could use input functions to actually set the bank charge the bank bonus and the account balance but let's look at each line in turn. The bank charge is made equal to 10. The bank bonus is made equal to 1. And the account balance is assigned 50. Then we ask this question. Is the account balance less than 0? Which is really asking, is 50 less than 0? Well, it's not, is it? 50 is bigger than 0. So that's false. Consequently, we come here. And execute this because this is the bit that's executed when the test is false in other words what follows the else and when I say what follows the else the bit that is indented 
because you could say that print follows the else, but that isn't indented. So account balance is equal to account balance plus bank bonus. And of course, that means 50 is added to 1 to give 51, and that is stored in account balance. And on this line here, we print what that account balance is, and we can see down here the account balance is 51. That's what we get when this particular program runs. We'll revisit the same program with one change, and the change is shown on this particular line here. Account balance is assigned minus 20. Consequently, the account is overdrawn. So we execute the first three steps. There's our sequence, setting up all of the variables. And then we come to here where it says account balance less than zero. And we have to ask the question, is this true or false? Well, clearly, minus 20 is less than zero. So this is true. Therefore, we execute this particular line, the line that's indented after the if. And this becomes account balance is assigned account balance minus bank charge. Well, the balance is currently minus 20. The bank charge is £10, and that's taken away from the account balance, with the result being assigned to the account balance. So the account balance is minus 30. Now what we do, we leave the selection construct and we go straight to this line here. In other words, we do not execute this line. We only execute this line if the conditional test here was false, and we've just seen it's true. So there's a choice taking place. We chose, or the program chose, to execute this line. Now when we get to here, this will output this. The account balance is minus 30. So we've seen two flows through this particular program. And the choice has been between executing this line of code or this line of code. Now, if you remember from the previous video, what happened, we had a choice of executing one line or not executing it. Here, there's a choice of two lines of code or two areas of code. Because one of the things I wish to stress at this point, if we look here, there is only one line following the if. Likewise, there's only one line following the else. But there could be 10 lines following the if, and providing they're all indented, all of those would be executed if this here was true. In this area, there's only one line, but if there was 10, 20 lines here, then all of those lines, providing they're indented in the same way that this line is indented, will be executed if this test here was false. Check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.